back to A Knitter's Life, my little corner where tea and happiness and knitting all meet and coincide. I hope you guys are having a lovely spring, or if you're on the other side of the equator, a lovely autumn, because I think you all are picking apples and moving into autumn. Um, so we're moving into spring, and we're really enjoying it, at least I am. Um, the we just came through a really really cold snap we even had a dusting of snow last week but it's all gone totally gone i can't complain because it's nothing like the east coast it's really been one of those funny duddy springs where everything goes back and forth but we are finally back into spring we are working outside the trees are blooming and it's a nice lovely 70 degrees today so it's perfect um, but anyways, I still am sipping tea. I drink tea all year round. Um, if you've been with me long enough, you know that I do that even when it's really hot. It's just something about tea. Today, I am sipping some more lovely Plum Deluxe tea. It is called Everything's Okay. Isn't that the best? I love it. Um, I love it. Uh, when I saw this on their website, I instantly almost just bonded with it because the story is uh, when I was little after all of us girls or two of us girls would have a tiff or an argument with one another or just a big hullabaloo I don't know exactly what the circumstances might have been but just after there had been a big hullabaloo as you know girls are bound to have hullabaloos right <laughs> we can be quite dramatic sometimes um, my mom, because there was three, there's three sisters in our family, so I have an older sister and a younger sister, and I'm smack dab in the middle. So you can imagine, you can imagine, right? Smack dab in the middle is pretty hard. Anyways, um, she would, she would set us all down. She's like, let's go make a cup of tea. So we'd get the little brown teapot out. I think I've told this story before get the little brown teapot out and the blue and white tea, china teacups and um, we'd have an everything's okay kind of tea so but there was never any tea called everything's okay um, so I'm I was thrilled when I saw this on the plums deluxe website because because of that memory I just had to have it just it's just it's just so fun so um, uh, this and uh, the underneath it says sometimes all you need is a cup of tea and that's so true uh, another th another scenario that comes to mind do you remember sense and sensibility and after um, oh, I forget the middle sister's name has a big hullabaloo with um, the guy that she really likes and she comes back to the house and is, she's tired crying and the mother says to the younger sister go get a cup of tea and um, the little sister brings it in, but the, the middle sister does not want the cup of tea, and so she hands it to the um, older sister, who is Emma, played by Emma Thompson. And they all go into their rooms and just are wailing um, because of all the hurt feelings, and Emma Thompson sits down on the steps and has this cup of tea. <laughs> and to me, that's another one, a scenario like, okay, that's right, you just need this everything's okay tea. So I'm in love with this tea. Besides, it's very tasty. It's a it's an herbal tea. It's all organic, and it's honey bush tea, apple pieces, raspberry leaves, lemon balm, rose hips, peppermint, hibiscus, cranberry, safflower, blue cornflower, and natural flavorings. Isn't that lovely? Just lovely. So lovely, and it is quite good. It's nice and and soothing and light and refreshing. So Plum Deluxe has a tea of the month club, people. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's only $10 per month and you get that month's tea plus a sample of another tea. One of their signature blends that they always have available on the website so you kind of get to taste um, a smattering of um, their teas. So, and the, the, from what I understand, the postage is, is um, included in that $10 and they do it every quarter. So you can sign up for four, for four months no, no. You sign up for, well, whatever that is. You sign up every quarter. Oh, I'm probably getting this all wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put it in the show notes, okay, everyone? Down below in YouTube and then on, um, 
on Ravelry too, and I'll sh show you the links. But I just think, one, it would make a really lovely gift for someone, and two, it would be so fun to receive. So you might want to just get it for yourself. But the tea of the month, ah, uh, would be so fun. The tea of the month, they make up specially for only people that are in the tea club. So that would be fun too, to see the different blends that they make up. They make some really good things. Also, subscribe to them on Instagram because they come up with these, they have these little tips um, now and again. They also um, like show you new, th new blends of tea that are coming. One of the tips that they had, Plum Deluxe had on Instagram recently was to spring clean your tea cupboard. And um, because after a year, most teas are kind of flat tasting, you really want to dr drink them really fresh. Um, and I didn't, I thought, oh yeah, right, that's so true, I knew that, but I needed that gentle nudge and reminder to actually do that. So um, when I saw that on their Instagram feed, I went over and I cleaned out my tea cupboard of, of some, but just, it was just the odds and ends, ends of teas that maybe I've had for more than a year. Um, and it made room for some new tea. So I was really excited about that. It made me feel good too. A little, little portion of my house spring cleaned. So um, yeah, so do subscribe to them on Instagram too because they, they really, they have some great, oh, recipes too. They have recipes. Like how great is that? So um, anyways, okay, enough about tea. We're here for the knitting, right? Okay, ah, one more sip. I had this really crazy adventure. I won't talk too much about adventures until the end, but this one kind of involves knitting. I had to go to my sister's shop. So this is um, my brother-in-law and my sister own a grocery store, an organic small farm local grocery store down in Fountain Square, Indianapolis. And um, they, were short, some of their employees were sick. And so my sister said, texted me, said, can you work today by any chance? We have this film crew coming in from, from Indianapolis and some of them are flying in from California and they're, they're trying to shoot this advertisement for um, a company. They want to use our shop as the location and it's been set up for months and we have everything planned and, and ready to go, but we're short. And I can't get off. She works at the hospital um, during the day. She is a occupational therapist, and then at, in the evenings and on Saturdays, she works at um, her the shop. Um, and her husband's there the whole time. But, anyways, so um, I said, okay, let me see what I can do. And so mo my mom came over and babysat the boys, and I just went. It was about a three-hour window that I needed to work over the lunch hour. And the production clue, this was the real deal. This was, you know, I thought, I thought, okay, well, maybe it's just, you know, a couple of people with the cameras. No, they had the big RVs for the makeup and the costumes, and they had tents, and they had prop people, and they had the camera people, and they had all, everybody, um, some people in tents watching on screens, and everybody had earpieces so that they could all communicate and then they had people in tents um in this i don't know black thing I, i'm not i don't this isn't my world so i have no idea i'm probably saying all the wrong things and then they had actors and they it was hysterical the, the um it, it was you see, you know, you watch TV and you sometimes think about how these things were put together, but then to see it and how chopped up it sometimes can be and um, the guy that that counts down and has his hands on the actor's backs, okay, ready in five, four, three, two, one, action, and he <laughs> kind of pushes them forward and slinks back. It's hysterical. I just... I didn't, I was too busy. We were slammed. The shop was still open even though they were filming in it. Craig had told them, my brother-in-law had told them um, that um, not to film in the shop from 10 to 2 because those are the busiest times. Well, I think they thought that they were supposed to film in the shop 
from 10 to till 2 or they just wanted the shop when it was super busy because it was super busy and um, super crazy but anyways that's going on well I and I'm really you know it's really busy but I'm seeing these these people are wearing these amazing sweaters one of the actresses was dressed up in this amazing yellow sweater and then one of the pr the producers had this instead of a suit coat on it was a seed stitch knitted gray suit coat it was amazing and the detail on it uh, was just gorgeous I wanted to run up to him and say can I take a picture I love your sweater but he was kind of too posh for that so I didn't and I, I didn't want to interrupt the actress either but so I didn't take a picture of her either but I really wish what do you guys do in those kinds of circumstances I need to get up the gumption to just ask people can I take a picture I love that sweater I mean I'm probably never going to see a sweater like that again right so I really should have gotten up the gumption anyways I'd be curious what do you guys do do you find yourself being a little too shy to ask people for pictures of their sweaters or do you just dive in there and ask them I'd be curious to know but anyways okay on to some knitting well I have released my newest pattern raindrops and you guys have been so kind it has been so well received you are, have astounded me with just how many people have purchased it and downloaded it so thank you very very much I really appreciate all the support and all your kind words um, it's been it was fun to release and fun to do it took me for so long I came up with this idea a year ago and just my life is busier than I than I think it really is and I always think I can you know do more than I really can but I did finally get this done and um, had some lovely test knitters help me out with the pattern and of course Gina of Brownie Knits the Brownie Knits podcast she's my wonderful tech editor and um, she just helped me with find all the little bits and pieces that um, could be wrong with it so that was really it's really nice to have a good team to work with so thanks to to Gina very much um, and uh, thanks to those of you who test knit it so um, anyways this is this is raindrops and this is the DK weight version and um, it's the larger version it starts off with little seed stitches in the stocking net which are really hard to see in the dark dark blue here you can see them there and they're supposed to be like little tiny raindrops falling from the sky and then the eyelets you start with one yarn over and then um, you increase to two yarn overs and three yarn overs and then four yarn overs so the raindrops get bigger and bigger and bigger as they fall to the ground and make a puddle because as you know my boys and I well the boys love to get on their boots and go puddle jumping so this was thought up while they were puddle jumping and I was sitting there thinking oh I need a shawl around my neck and oh wouldn't it be lovely I love the rain I, I just the rain to me especially a gentle quiet rain it's a time to be cozy I do like to walk in the rain which is crazy but I do um, I don't know I've always liked the rain I struggle with rain now I used to not but oftentimes rain brings on a headache or a migraine for me but I still love it even though I just find ways of getting through it I can feel the the, the pressure um, dropping as the rain comes in so but so I'm a very good weather barometer <laughs> But I love this shawl. This is this is um, this bigger one is perfect for a colder day, um, and then this this smaller one is perfect for just um, like a just really lightweight, almost decorative kind of wrap. So it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. This one is made out of Tannis Fiber Arts Blue Label 
her fingering sock base and it has a little bit, I think it has 10% of cashmere in it, so it's really nice and soft. So does this Ancient Arts yarn. This is their um, DK and this is the Merino Cashmere Nylon, the MCN base um, and it is beautiful. This was made with two skeins and um, it's just, it's nice and warm and cozy. So that pattern is available for $1.99 until the end of April and you don't need a coupon code, it's just $1.99 in Ravelry. So and then after April it will go up to $4. So um, anyways, it's fun. So many of you have purchased the pattern that I'm thinking that we should do a knit along because I want to see all of your projects. What do you think? Should we do it? Let me know. Speaking of knit alongs, we have had such a fun conversation in last episode's thread about um, Miss Marple and our favorite Miss Marples um, and our favorite actresses for Miss Marple. Um, and I, I so uh, a few of you, actually quite a few of you, really, really strongly prefer, um, I'm going to get her name wrong, Joan Hickson, is it, as Miss Marple? Is that right? Um, and I tried to watch one of her episodes. I, they're hard to find. I was tr looking for them on YouTube. I need to see if they're available on Netflix. I haven't, I haven't looked there. But um, I got interrupted, and so I hadn't really gotten into it yet. But I just keep on coming back to my favorite are the ones with Geraldine McEwen. But I don't hear many people say that, which is very interesting. Um, I love the ones with Geraldine McEwen. To me, I don't know. To me, she's Miss Marple. Maybe it's because I, those are the f ones that I watched, have watched the most. I also like those because they have the most knitted pieces in them. She's always wearing a knitted sweater or a knitted shawl or something. Or, um, and a lot of the characters in the episodes are wearing knitted pieces. So, but I really like the idea of doing a Miss Marple knit along. So let's start a thread in the group because what we need to do the next thing, oh, oh, that's right. Um, I was gifted a pattern, the Miss Marple socks, which are amazing. They're so beautiful. Did I, I need to get, I should go just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, I, was, I thought I had the Miss Marple sock pattern close by, but I didn't. But um, a runner bean on Valerie sent me the Miss Marple socks, or just they're called Miss Marple. Uh, but they're beautiful two colored socks. They're not done with um, a fair aisle technique, a stranded knitting, but they are a slip stitch knitting, which makes it super easy. So I'm really excited about trying those. And a big thank you to a runner bean for sending me that pattern. Um, but it got me thinking what other patterns are out there for a Miss Marple knit along. So I was trying to put together a bundle in my favorites, under my favorites in um, Ravelry of Miss Marple themed patterns. But I thought we should start a thread. Let's start a thread in the group with Miss Marple themed patterns. So patterns that we can knit during this knit along for Miss Marple. Um, and also in that thread, give some suggestions for maybe Miss Marple themed yarns. Do you know any? Indie dyers that have done Miss Marple themed yarns um, or anything, um, even some vintage patterns. If you, I was looking on Pinterest for some vintage patterns that might be look like things that Miss Marple would wear or knit or shawls that maybe Miss Marple would wear. So if you have suggestions, go to the Ravelry um, thread and let us know because um, I think it would be fun. To, be, to put together a com compilation of pr um, projects that we can make for the Miss Marple knit along because I think that people would really like it. And then we could watch some Miss Marple movies and we could talk about it. So um, I think it's a really great idea. Let's get some more um, ideas flowing and then let's figure out um, what everyone wants to do for a start date because um, I know that the end of school is coming up and um, maybe we want to do it early summer or over the summer. That would be fun. Over the summer, because then we'd have a longer time 
to um, to do it. And watching the Smurfles over the summer would be so much fun, wouldn't it? So that's an idea. I will definitely be making the Miss Marple socks, Miss Marple socks during the knit along because though they're just gorgeous. I'll link to them in the show notes. Um, but thank you very much, a runner bean, for sending that pattern to me. That meant a lot. So. Anyway, so get chatting in the thread. Let's hear your ideas. Let's hear your suggestions. I want, I want to see some yarns too. So we'll get busy. I'll try to share the Pinterest board that I have on Pinterest and you can send me pins to add to that board too. And um, I'll try to figure out, can everybody see a bundle of patterns that I make? Or I'll have to figure that one out. There's lots to figure out in life, isn't there? <laughs> Um, so speaking of patterns and being sent patterns, I want to give another um, thank you to Dana Ray on Ravelry. She sent me um, the family tree cowl and, fam and the family tree scarf pattern. And it's such a neat idea where you find your family's favorite colors and um, then you put them together in a cowl so that each cowl is unique and um, you can have your family's signature cowl. And in some ways it would be fun, you could knit them for each member of the family. So I thought that was um, very, very sweet. She says here, the finished item is like having a family ring in the form of a hand knit with lots of history and significance. You can include whatever constellation of family you'd like to represent, your immediate or extended family, even pets. Grandmothers would love one representing each of their grandchildren. Isn't that neat? I just thought that was very thoughtful. So you can find that pattern, um, family tree cowl, and then she has another pattern, family tree scarf, and you can find those two patterns on Ravelry. So thank you very much for sending those to me. That is just the type of thing that I think is really fun. So on to more knitting okay so speaking of miss marple and knits that go coincide with um movies here is the call the midwife sweater i haven't taken the um stitch markers off yet but that those are where i placed buttonholes so i uh, i forget what i had left to do uh, maybe it was just the button band, I think, that I had left to do, and there it is. I did it. I um, did a knitted on button band because to me, that it's a knitted on rib. To me, it looks um, just very professional and finished. It's very old style, um, if you will, kind of um, kind of button band. What you do is you take a long, long circular needle and you pick up all the stitches along the, the neck edge. So all the stitches along here. And I usually pick up three stitches for every four rows. If you pick up um, one stitch for each row, your button band will be too wide. So you want to pick up three stitches for every four rows. So your three stitches three stitches for each row for three rows. Ah. Do you guys get what I mean? You're skipping a row every fourth row. Um, or you're skipping every fourth row. There we go! <laughs> so um, then I cast on um, with my working yarn I cast on, let's see, I one, two, three, four, five, six six stitches and the first stitch I always slipped knitwise on the front side so that it tucked under and it curled under and created a really kind of like a rounded edge. You can see it slipped there and then on the front side here. It's kind of gangly to try to show you. It creates just a really nice finished edge. If you didn't do that, it would be flat and it just wouldn't look as finished. So, and then I did a rib. So I did two that were knit in the beginning. One of them was slipped. Slip one as if to knit, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. Um, 
but the last knit one on the other side I would knit two together to attach it to the, all the stitches that I picked up. It sounds tedious but it's actually fairly easy to do and it went fairly fast and it just gives that really 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 nice um, professional kind of finish. So um, now all I need to do is find buttons which I haven't done yet. I think I just want to find plain buttons because that's kind of the style that they wear in the show called the Midwife. Um, but I might change my mind. I might go with something different. But I think for now it's going to be plain. So there it is. It's done. Now I just have to find a little light blue dress, right? <laughs> um, again, for those of you who are new, this is um, my own adapta ab adaptation. Whew, get it out there of the, uh, the sweater worn in the TV show um, called Midwife and I love that TV show. It's so wonderful. You can find it on Netflix and it's the fifth season is airing right now on PBS if you're here in the States. Um, and I think it just aired in England so you guys have, you guys know the ending. Don't tell us please. <laughs> um, but um, I this is there isn't a pattern unfortunately but it's very easy to do I got my this is knit picks knit pick sport in the holly berry colorway and I did a gauge swatch and then I um, downloaded the contigu contiguous sleeve pattern on Ravelry and it's a method of doing top downs with sweaters with satin sleeves so um, there's some increasing along the top shoulder and then you do increasing for the sleeves and then you knit the sleeves down as well as the the body of the sweater until you cast them off and do an underarm gusset and things like that so I just did from my gauge swatch I figured out how many stitches I needed to cast on um, and then went from there so um, it's you can do it you can do it it's very easy even though there isn't a pattern you can do it um, I enjoyed it it took me longer than I thought I would just because I put it away for a while and forgot to get it back out but and it's fun to have another long term whip completed so there we go I think that I might keep it out even through the summer because sometimes in the evening I get chilly and I like to put on a sweater so Hopefully I'll get the buttons for that, that soon and put it on. So there, two big things that have taken a long time. My shawls and my call midwife sweater. Done. Feels good. I did get some socks done. So um, I got, this is a sock pattern um, by Brownie Knits, by Gina of, a brownie, knit, of brownie Knits. This is her brownie sock recipe, and it's a wonderful pattern because it has different comes, different heels and toes um, ideas. It has even a really interesting um, thing to do on the foot section to make the foot really to, gra to grab your um, foot, um, and it has some different things you can do on the. Um, he, the what the the foot section not the foot section the leg section thank you um, so she has a garter stitch uh, short row heel and she also has garter stitch short row toes you can also do different kinds of toes um, in there so she has a lot of really cool options in that pattern and I think. Um, her, I think her pattern is just $1.99 too right now, so it's definitely worth getting and definitely worth having in your library because it's one of those that combine a lot of different things that you'll use it so many different ways. Um, and it has different sizes in it as well. And the textured pattern is just a lot of fun, um, fun to do. So the sock yarn is just sock yarn that I've dyed up dyed up and um, I was playing around with colors and 
Some of you have asked if I would sell my, sock, my hand dyed yarn, and I'm not ready to just yet. I will, I might do it for like, small kits or patterns um, and then kit them together, but um, my life is busy. <laughs> And there will be a season in my life for dyeing yarn and, and selling it. But for right now, it's something that I just do for fun. So for myself, but I will someday, someday. There's a season for everything. This is another, um, speaking of, well, we're on, while we're on the subject of Gina's wonderful sock pattern from Bounty Knits, she gifted me some socks. Now. This is my first pair of hand knitted socks knitted by someone else that was gifted to me. I'm just floored that somebody would knit me socks. I mean, of course you knit yourself socks, right? Let's admit it, we all love ourselves. We, we just, <laughs> that's why we knit ourselves socks, right? Um, actually, I didn't ever knit myself socks until I had made a, several pairs for my mom and she said, oh, you need to make yourself a pair. So I did, and then I realized how wonderful they were. <laughs> but I thought, how am I ever gonna knit socks for anybody else? I wanted to just knit socks for me. But anyways, this um, pair of socks Gina made for me for my birthday. Isn't that the sweetest? I just was, I was floored. You can tell I've already worn them because they're, they're kind of um, misshapen a little bit, but this is, she said this was Knit Picks Felici, and I forget what colorway she said it was, but it's the perfect color me, way for me, pinks and purples. I love pinks and purples. So, um, and again, this is her pattern, um, brownie sock recipe. And she did a different toe in it, and she does have this toe in the pattern as well. So, she, she's awesome, came up with a really fun pattern. And I'm floored to have received socks that somebody else knitted just for me. And they fit! I don't know how she did that. Because we don't wear the same size shoe. But I think it's, I think it's a miracle. Um, then I tried um, Molly of a Homespun House had, came out with a new pattern. Mrs. Weasley's Family Socks, I think is what it's called. So of course I had to cast them on because it would be so much fun to try. And again, it's a, just a lightly textured pattern. And she has um, kids sizes and women sizes and I think a man size in there. So uh, this is again sack yarn that I dyed just for fun because it's sometimes just so much fun to splash color around. Um, but it's, it's speckled. I'm sure you could find something similar somewhere. Um, I did a heel flap and gusset, and then I did the rounded toe in just contrasting yarn that I dyed as well. So I had fun. This this was fun to me. These are just spring socks, and it's a, it was a very um, relaxing pattern to knit as well. So that's the type of socks that I like to knit right now. Nice and relaxing. So that was fun. So two socks down two pairs of down, nothing nearly as famous as what Mina has done, but it's two pairs of socks, right? We're good. I think that that's it for finished items. Um, so what we're going to do is take a break and then I will come back a little later and we'll do some whips. Okay, I'm back. So with the whips, I think the biggest whip that I have going on right now is our um, postcard knit along, which I know it's not technically a whip, but it kind of is a whip because um, I do ha check Ravelry um, quite often through the week and there's more postcards to address. And so it's, it's kind of like an ongoing work in progress for me addressing all the, the postcards, which is so much fun. I really love hearing from each one and every one of you um, who write me and ask me to send a postcard out. 
for those of you who are new, what we're doing is a, kind of like a little knit along to see one another's um, knitter's life. I want to see your knitting life um, and what your knitting life looks like. You can post one picture or you can post um, as many pictures as you want, um, either on Instagram or in the Ravelry group or both. I think it would be great. It's, it's fun when I see peop people do both of just the postcard and I'll send you a postcard. It's kind of a postcard just of um, the, my logo and then um, you take it with your what you're knitting, your whip at, at the moment. Um, and it's been so much fun to see the different ones. One, okay, I ha it's fun to hear from each one of you and to hear how you watch the podcast and when you watch it. And so many of you, um, I just, you know, I can so relate to you. It, it's our it's our knitting group and in knitting groups you go around and you see one another's projects and you get inspired by one another's projects and so this is a different way of accomplishing that in a knitting group you'd see it face to face but um, here we get to see each other's projects um, online so through the through just the the postcard if you will so there's still plenty of time I think I'm going to keep the podcast the postcard knit along going through, um, I think until J June 1st. I'm gonna close it then. So all through the rest of April and all through May. Um, so if you watch this a little later on and you want a postcard and you wanna jump in, then just PM me on Ravelry and send me your address and I will get a postcard out to you. So um, it's been fun. Some of the ones that I've enjoyed, um, Hannah Katya, or Ka Kitya, I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry, but Hannah, Hannah Kitya, it's H-A-N-N-A-K-Y-T-T-A on Ravelry. She's in Finland, hi Hannah. And she had took, you, you've got to go over to the Ravelry thread a knitters, in the a Knitter's Life group. She took um, this picture of the postcard in front of this like wall of yarn in her local yarn shop. She was there for the knitting group and oh my goodness, I want to walk in that yarn shop. <laughs> it's a long way away from me though, but it looks like the most amazing yarn shop. And then she posted one on Instagram and you can find that, that picture by searching under the hashtag, a knitter's life postcard. She took a picture of the postcard in front of a wall of buttons. Oh, all those buttons look amazing. I would definitely find the buttons I need for my um, called midwife sweater. <sighs> Well, let's just get some tickets and fly to Finland, shall we? Um, another, um, Dana Ray, Dana Ray 19 on uh, uh, Ravelry. Um, you've got to go check out her picture in the Ravelry thread. She took a picture of her cozy memories banquet and a cup of tea and some minis. And it just looked like, oh, I just want to sit there and knit. Can I drink that cup of tea? And can I work on your cozy memories blanket? I just wanted to hop in the picture. Um, which is kind of fun. You know, you see these pictures and they're just so lovely. So it's so fun to see that everybody else is having a wonderful knitting life too. Um, a knitter's friend, Emma, in Australia. Hi, Emma. She she did um, she did a beautiful like collage of her knitting and her works in progress. And it had, um, oh, I'm gonna forget, a calendula? Is that how you say it, a calendula? flower I'm saying it wrong I think um, in the middle of her um, works in progress and it's so beautiful oh, the flowers on the other side of the equator they're so gorgeous but our flowers are coming soon um, knit a uh, knitting per, knit and pearl girl knit and knit and pearl girl on Ravelry she had the most beautiful socks they're like more than rainbow socks. And so you've got to go see her picture in the Ravelry thread too. There's just so many wonderful pictures. You just have to go check them out um, because they're so fun. So on Instagram, you can search for it under the hashtag, A Knitter's Life Postcard. And on Ravelry, in the A Knitter's Life Ravelry group, there's a thread and you can look. And I'm definitely going to do a giveaway for this. Um, so I'll close the thread June 1st and I'll we'll probably do a project bag made by me and some yarn that either I pick up along the way or some yarn dyed my, by me. So there you go. That's another way to get my hand dyed yarn. <laughs> Participate in the group um, and I'll do it as a giveaway. 
So it'll probably be sack yarn because hello, we like to knit socks, don't we? So that's, I think, the biggest work in progress that I have going, but I have others, don't worry, don't worry. Um, one of the ones that I have, I think I've shown these to you guys before. This is my car knitting, my um, pick up John from school knitting. Um, these socks, they have one done. Da -dun, da -dun. I think I've, and I've showed this to you last time. I did an extended um, garter stitch heel, and I explained that in the last episode, so I won't explain it again. But it's my short row heel, which there's a tutorial on the YouTube channel for. And then I just did an inch worth of garter stitch before I did it, just on the back side. So I've turned the heel, I'm headed to the home run on the foot. So um, I'm excited. These are my spring socks. Um, this is Regia Color Mania in the Colorway Pastel. And I really like it. We had a very, I, ha I went away on a knitting retreat this past weekend with um, an, uh, Gina of Brownie Knits and then our mutual friend. It's really Gina's friend who she introduced to me and then I became friends with her, but we're all friends together. It's like the three musketeers. Like we can't have one without the other. It's really cute. But we went away on a knitting retreat over the weekend to celebrate all three of our birthdays because we have birthdays very close to each other. And we had a fun discussion about double points versus um, two circulars or one magic loop, one long circular. Um, and I just love double, double points, whereas they really like magic loop or two circulars. I think they both agreed that they like magic loop, I think. I think I was concentrating at that moment. Um, but I think we figured it out to the fact that I have very, a very big palm and I have very long fingers um, and they have smaller, they lucky ducks, they have smaller hands, very delicate feminine hands and smaller palms. And so it just, um, it fits better for them to do two, uh, either two circulars or the one long cir circular with a magic loop where for me, the double points just feel better. Like my hands don't feel cramped. I don't know if that makes sense and I, if as either of any of you out there have made that correlation between liking double points or liking magic loop. I'd be interested to know. Um, but that's what we put it down to for us. Um, they have a little beautiful, delicate, small hand and I have bigger hands <laughs> um, with longer fingers. So I can always reach on the piano because I played piano for a while when I was growing up. I can reach an octave and either was either an octave and two, I think. So I played the violin too and um, one of my violin teachers said, you should really play the cello because you have such big hands. So it was after that p the violin teacher that I kind of gave up the violin. Isn't that sad? Okay, anyways, I'm loving these socks because they are so springy. They're almost done. Another almost done whip is dun, 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 my Georgia cardigan. This is the Georgia cardigan by um, Jane Richmond. I'm knitting, knitting it out of uh, Malabrigo, their sock. Um, and this is the color, oh, the tag is right here. Thank goodness. <laughs> Um, it's a Malabrigo sock, and it is Cote d'Azur. There you go. So um, it's a super wash merino. It's really nice. So it's a sock weight cardigan. Um, and I really wanted, you know, a lot of people do um, some of the other sock weight cardigans, but I really wanted uh, a cardigan that had coverage in the front. I really liked the detail too. You can't see it as much because it's so dark, but you can see it in person. There's a little bit of ruching at the back and at the front of this cardigan, which is really, really pretty. I'm on the sleeves, which people, I have to admit, <sighs> I have a hard time with sleeves. I used to be fine. I used to just power through the sleeves and no problem. And now I'm just like, 
I have such little knitting time that I'd rather do something more interesting. So I need to figure out a way of bribing myself to knit the rest of these sleeves because this cardigan is almost done. Really, it's almost done and I could be wearing it. That's what I need to tell myself. I wanted to knit a navy blue lightweight cardigan because I wear lightweight cardigans so much and I was having a hard time finding a navy blue one. So I thought that I would just make a navy blue one, right? If you can't find it, make it, create it, create what you want. I really like the pattern and I think I'm going to do it again. Um, and I will do it in a lighter yarn so that you can see the ruching. But it's definitely one of those patterns that you want to have and you want to do again because it's a basic pattern um, that you could do anything with. So I'm enjoying it, except for the sleeves. <laughs> we, need, we need a machine to just knit the sleeves. I should take it to be my card knitting every day for the school pickup because I think then I would get it done. So that's what I should do. I should do it. <laughs> Any of you have sleeve problems? All right, I had button band problems last time and I was putting off finishing the call the midwife sweater and I promised myself that I would finish the button band before I, I talk to you guys again. So. How about just one sleeve? I'll finish one sleeve before we meet again. How about that? That sounds good. So if you're knitting a sleeve out there, you have to finish it before I podcast again, okay? <laughs> um, another work in progress is some crochet. I know, isn't this exciting? I haven't had crochet on my needles for a while, so I am really excited about this. Um, the first thing that I've been working on is with some Knit Picks cotton. Let's see, my tag. No, my tag is not in here. It's been taken. Um, it's Knit Picks cotton and it's in their organic base. So I'm um, doing this, this, I wanted to do a little dress for my niece. Um, um, for her birthday. Her birthday's in a couple of weeks. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little um, sp a summer spring dress. And what you do, I'll, I'll do the link. I'll get, put the link. I can't talk tonight. I'll put the link on uh, down below and on the show notes in Ravelry. But it's the Granny Square Little Girl's Dress on Craftsy. And it's a free pattern. And it's really cute. Um, you do these Granny Squares and you put them together and then um, you make the bodice of the dress out of the granny squares and crochet, that's why I should be saying, and then you make the um, skirt of the dress out of material and you just gather it and then seam it together on the bottom here. I, can't, I, need, I need four hands down here. So I'm going to be building the bodice now uh, up from the top of these granny squares and then to the bottom I'll attach the skirt. So I think I'll, I'm going to use some vintage fabric. What I haven't decided, and it will kind of depend on how much time I have. If I um, go ahead and add um, a crocheted lace border to the bottom, the hem of the skirt. But I think it would be, look really cute if I did. We'll just see if I run out of time or not. So I've been working on that. I've really enjoyed working with this cotton. Um, so I really would like to work with a blend um, too, just to see if that works, like a cotton linen blend, to see if that will hold up any better. Because sometimes cotton has the tendency to really, really sag, and it needs the body of some of the other fibers um, to hold it up. The other crochet that I have been working on is the beautiful Victoria Shawl by Sandra Terry Hart. And this pattern was a gift to me from Amelia. And Amelia, I've been working on it. It needs to be blocked and it isn't finished yet. So I've done the body of the shawl and I, I stopped a little short because I ran out of yarn. I was using the Ella Ray lace weight um, and I, I, but thankfully I got through the body of the shawl 
and I'm going to do the border in this contrasting purple. So it's very similar, if you can see, but it will just, it will kind of coordinate and will be more of a plain border. So, um, and the border is a beautiful shell border, which will really, really look quite nice. So I'm enjoying that. It's fun to, to do something a little different. Um, and it's fun to do a little more crochet. I, I, crochet was my first love when I was, when I was um, five. Was I five or was I younger than that? Five, because my sister was born. And that's kind of right around the time that I learned how to crochet. I think that my mom did it to keep me occupied. I was used to being the baby and so but there is a new baby now so I I um, it was a good it was a good idea she had because I took to crochet and I loved it and I came up with all sorts of things for my dollies with my crochet <laughs> so I'm having a lot of fun it's um, this Victoria shawl by Sandra Terry Hart it is so well written she has it charted she has it written out. She has UK terms and US terms, and then the translations. Um, so it is extremely well done. It is definitely worth getting, and thank you, Amelia, for giving it to me, because I'm really, really enjoying it. It's in a new project bag. I forgot to show you. I made this project bag over the Easter weekend, um, and it's out of a vintage tea towel. Well, vintage, 1978, however vintage that can be. I just thought it was so cute. I loved the little kids hugging the doggy because I'm thinking that Arthur, that to me this is Arthur. Arthur loves animals and honestly he needs a little doggy. But we just haven't gotten there yet. We'll see. We had a doggy when John was born and then we lost him and it's hard losing doggies. It's hard losing any animal. So anyways, but I've been enjoying my project bag very much. Vintage, vintage sheets and vintage linen. Then I made, I decided my project bag needed embellishment. <laughs> and I made a little brooch for my project bag. So I just was having fun. It's fun to do embroidery and things like that. So I made a little brooch for my project bag. I have been doing yet more crochet. So on this weekend that we went last weekend, here you wanna see into this colorful bag, basket of things. Oh, I don't know if you can, there's all sorts of things in here. Okay, see this colorful bag, yes. Um, so last weekend, on this weekend, we started off and um, Gina, Carol and I, and um, we all met down at Nashville, Indiana, which is south of where I live, and it is west of where Carol lives. So it was kind of like a good meeting place for all of us. We met at the B at the B and B where we were going to stay, and then we walked, took our project ba baskets, and walked over to a coffee shop, and we sat down and we were chatting away and we were all talking about the things that we were working on and what we want to work on. And both Carol and I said one of the things that we really wanted to work on was a crocheted scrap gan. So kind of like the cozy memory blanket, but with crochet granny squares like this. And Gina has made, I think she's on her second crochet scrap gan and it's gorgeous. It's just so beautiful. Um, she does them up so fast. She's so good at them. And G um, Carol said, oh, yes, I want to do that. And I said, me too, but I'm out of minis. I have this idea um, uh, for some patterns. And I had enough minis to do the prototype for the first pattern that I want to do. And then I was out of minis because I had made some gifts and we did the the um, cowl over Christmas <sighs> my scrap cowl so I was totally out of minis and so I said I'm just gonna have to wait until I get more minis because I don't have any minis and um, Gina didn't say anything she she didn't even 
glimmer or hint. It was hysterical. Now that I think back on it, later on that night, we were um, in our PJs, sitting around, chatting away, still knitting, because <laughs> that was the whole point of this, this weekend. Um, and she said, okay, let's open our birthday presents, because we all had brought each other birthday presents to celebrate our birthdays. And Gina's birthday present to both Carol and I was this basket. It was, it was a box full of minis to start our scrap games. We just, we hooted and hollered and we couldn't believe it. We were like, how did you keep it quiet when we both said it? So it was a lot of fun. We were both very, very delighted and so excited. Um, and of course, I had to start mine right away. Gina, when we were there, showed me how to um, join, so do the border and join as you go, which I think is ingenious. I can't believe that I, I, I can't believe I did Afghans any other way. So I still have to perfect my technique about it. Um, but from now on, I will be doing crocheted Afghans with the join as you go method because it just makes them, you see your progress and then you're like, okay, can I just add one more square? I just want to add one more square. So um, another YouTube tutorial, um, I don't know if Gina has a tutorial on how to join your, your um, pieces as you go, but Arnie and Carlos have a YouTube channel. Did you know about that? I didn't know about that. Um, they are adorable. If you haven't watched their channel, they are so adorable. Their house is so cute, and um, you feel like you stepped into a world of color when you start watching their little episodes or they're, they're really tutorials, but they're so cute. So um, Arne has a crochet competition to see who can knit the fastest um, granny square on there right now. But he also shows you the technique um, to join them, the, the granny squares. So if you haven't watched Arne and Carlos they're on their YouTube channel, go head over there and watch them because they are so adorable. And um, you should see if you can you can beat Arne's time in um, crocheting a granny square. I can't, not at all. So I'm not even going to try, but um, that's okay. So I'm using some yarn to join them all that I had in my stash, right? You stash yarn. I almost bought some new yarn for it, but I'm like, no, 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 go shop the stash. So this is some Sheldridge Farm Soft Touch Ultra 100% Wool. And it's, it's a robin's egg. It is, um, it's like a heavy fingering, but not quite to DK. But it's this beautiful robin's egg blue. I was crocheting this on the back deck one afternoon. And I was playing trucks with Arthur. And he said, he's so cute. He's, keep in mind, he's two and a half, but he's so cute. He says, Mama, are you making a blanket? He says, blanket. And I said, I am. I'm making a new, I'm making a blanket. He says, are you making a new blanket? Not just a blanket, a new blanket. Yes, Arthur, I'm making a new blanket. And he said, are you making the blanket for me? <laughs> it was just like that. Are you making the blanket for me? <laughs> so I said, of course, Arthur, I'm making the blanket for you. So um, I'll make this, Arthur can have this blanket. We might keep it downstairs in the playroom so Mama can enjoy it too, but um, this will be Arthur's blanket. So how can you not? He's two and a half and he's asking if he can have this new blanket. <laughs> so cute. You just can't say no. So at least I can't say no. I was delighted that he liked it. He liked all the colors. He kept on looking through and, and looking at all the colors and um, saying, ooh. And then he was loading up his dump truck with the colors and driving them around and then bringing them back to me and dumping them in my basket. So um, this is the one that he particularly enjoyed. So I'm going to have to find out what this one is from Gina and make him make him something out of it but so this is will be Arthur's new blanket <laughs> um, I think that that is 
all the whips that I'm going to show you right now. I have some finished spinning. I'm so excited. I did it. So this, if you've been following along, this is the magical Joanna Springs way of spinning sack yarn. You, knit, you spin this one up as a three ply and ply it together so it's tweedy. And then you spin this one up as a Navajo ply so it's stripey. And then you stripe them together when you knit your sock. So you knit like four rows of the stripe and then you knit four rows of the tweed and four rows of the stripe and four rows of the tweed. So the, the outcome is magical. And now that I have them both finished, Guess what I'm gonna cast on? Another pair of socks. <laughs> you guys, why are we so crazy for socks? You know I've been thinking about this and contemplating that question. I really have because everybody is crazy for socks. But I adore um, Joanna's magical way of spinning this up. It's a four ounce braid that you split in half and then one half you spin into this Navajo ply and the other half you turn into this three ply. So I will be doing the next, in fact, the next thing that I have on my wheel is from Quillen Fiber Arts and this was Quillen Fiber Arts Betsy's favorite colors. So I have um, Quillen Fiber Arts 123 colorway on the, on the wheel right now and I'm spinning it up. Joanna's magical way of spinning socks. So thank you Joanna for coming up with that. It's brilliant. I love it. Isn't it gorgeous? I almost... <sighs> I like those colors. Another thing that I'm going to cast on with soon, I am going to... this is Ancient Arts Fiber. They sent this beautiful skein of reInvent which is wool, mohair, nylon, acrylic, silk. And it's a light fingering kind of sock weight um, yarn. Um, and it's a new yarn that they have. It has a lot of sheen to it, if you can see, you can see that. And that comes from the mohair. will also have a lot of drape to it. So I'd like to knit it up as a raindrops cowl, because I think it would look really pretty. And I think it would be the perfect colorway for my mom for Mother's Day. So this will be going on the needles very very soon um, so you can be you'll see that knit up um, but it's an interesting it's an interesting um, blend I've never seen a mohair acrylic silk nylon and wool blend before so I'm really interested to see how it knits up it does take color very well I will say though, if you are very, very sensitive to um, yarn and the harshness of yarn or the softness of yarn um, and prefer soft yarn, then I would think that this probably wouldn't be your cup of tea. I, I like all wool. M my friends know that I'm not that picky about the softness of wool. Um, I really like, I, f I feel like some of the h harder wools just have a really crisp look to them. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, how this knits up and if it does have some crispness. Another thing that I'm going to cast on, are we allowed to talk about what we want to cast on? Of course, right? Carol gave me this for my birthday. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it just, it's just stunning. The colors are just gorgeous. Well, it's Mrs. Crosby Loves to Play, the hat box um, yarn, it's, which is a merino silk and cashmere blend, and the color is wildflowers. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just, it's, it looks, I don't know, it just looks like a Monet. So um, I stared at this for quite some time after I received it. And then I decided that it had to become a waiting for rain. Have you seen that shawl? 
Isn't that such a pretty shawl? Oh, it's so pretty. So it's Waiting for re Rain by Soft, Soft Sweater. Um, and it is a very unique pattern. It's garter stitch with short row lace in it. I was so excited about this pattern when I saw it. Um, and it does use more yardage than these two skeins, but I did see in Ravelry um, a knitter had left notes on how she got it out of um, 638 yards, which um, would be exactly what I have. So I think I can do it. So I can't wait to get this cast on. This just, it just makes me happy just looking at it. You know why? Because it just, it's my colors, isn't it? It's gorgeous. So that's what I have going on. Tomorrow I head out to the fiber festival that we have, the first fiber, fiber festival of the season, which is the fiber event in Greencastle. So I'm looking forward to going to that. The weather is going to be absolutely stunning. It's going to be sunny all day and 70 degrees well 73 so it's going to be a beautiful day for it there have been some years where it's been bitter cold blowing blustery and rainy so I am looking forward to this this year it's going to be gorgeous um, so if you well I probably won't get this up until tomorrow so um, I hope I've gotten to see a few of you at the fiber event and uh, until then, ha remember to head over to the Ravelry group and um, let's have a chit chat about a knit along for the um, raindrops shawl and also in a separate thread let's have a chit chat about a Miss Marple um, knit along and give me your suggestions for patterns and yarns that we could use. It would be a lot of fun. So anyways, happy knitting, have fun you guys and I'll talk to you soon.